what is up guys so i played a hand recently that i wanted to show you guys that was sort of played in a non-standard manner and i wanted to talk about this hand because i want to go over the times where you should not maybe not play standardly and um in order to do this you need to understand what it is to play standardly in the first place so uh, i'm gonna start off with this hand this is played last week we had 510 going and let's uh go with the action and then i'll go over the analysis really quickly uh it was 510 the limit i was in the big blind with jack nine of spades hijack raised to 30. well i'm sorry not the hijack under the gun plus one we were seven handed i gave him a, hi a, a hijack range in the solver but um we'll go over that when i get to it uh and everyone folds and i go ahead and make the call which i think is like totally standard especially against this kid who was a um he was a fish he just seemed like he didn't belong there and i wanted to take advantage of that and the board comes four three deuce rainbow now i want you guys to stop and think and maybe write in the uh, comments how would you play this hand i think standard is check you check to the razor and i didn't do that i went ahead and i donk bet for one third he calls and i'm gonna just go over the i'm gonna go through the hand a little quickly and then we could talk more about my thought process uh pairs the board with the deuce of hearts bringing back to our flush draw uh, I bet again, and he calls one third and the jack of sp clubs on the river, and I go for half pot this time roughly, and he calls and mucks, and then let's get into the analysis. Hey guys, I changed my camera position d down here so that you can see the the whole thing better. Um, none of these hands behind my face are in range. The only hand that um, is over might be in range is over here, ace five off. So as you can see, here's our hand right here, jack nine suited. We have um, the spades variant. And as you can see, it's a lot of this range actually has a donking range. So the my thought process in this hand was that He's not going to have ace five often enough for me to not be able to bet here. And when when I did bet, okay, so I know people talk about live reads, like LOL live reads, but pre-flop, it felt like he really wanted to put the money in. Like he put it in quickly and then post-flop, he seemed unsure of himself. So, so... I thought that donking would be the best play. Uh, I've also studied spots like this recently. And like, this is sort of why you guys should study is that in real time, you're going to get to these spots and you're going to get to a node that you can play perfectly and you're going to know what to do. And you're going to have, you're going to find my bad. You're going to have like the highest EV because you're going to play GTO. So as you can see um, for Jack nine of spades, the, EV for betting is 35. Oh, they wanted to bet 33%. Uh, it's the same thing. So as you can see, um, we go, we, we do bet a lot here. Um, about 26%, 27% of the time. So I'm, I am going to just put that in. I don't think there's that much to say about the, the, the flop. So, <clears throat> Here's where I, I do want to um, talk a little bit more about these hands right here that fold out. I honestly think this is a huge chunk of his range. Um, I gave him, I, as you can see, I gave him a hijack, uh, a cutoff raising range. I was going to give him a hijack raising range, but I ended up put bumping up the cutoff because I've seen him play. And I think a lot of fish open cutoff ranges from every position, if that makes any sense. And what I think a lot of his range is, is going to be these hands that he should be folding out and these hands, but over here that are um, suited. 
And what he's not going to know is that he should be raising some of these. I knew that I didn't in real time. I didn't know that Queen Jack suited was the the hand to raise or Jack 10. But I knew that there was hands right around here that were suited that we're going to be raising at a pretty good frequency. So as you can see here, Queen Jack of uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the ones with these suits. So we got hearts here. Um, it's going to raise 25%. They're all going to. Yeah. So this one's going to be raising a little bit more. The Queen Jack of Clubs, which is not on this on here. Um, and then I my also also my, my live read and, and my read like in game is that I know that it, he's going to be raising all his sets and his two pairs. And, and he doesn't have these so often that when he calls me, I'm just going to get him to fold most of the hands that um, are beating me, which is like everything. I have Jack high, like, like he, like, like his ace highs, his king highs, he's going to have a lot of ace highs, like a lot of ace high. And I feel like if he, if he continues with a lot of ace highs, I can get him to fold the turn uh, pretty frequently. The turn was a deuce of hearts, as you can see. I put it up here. If you haven't used GT GTO Wizard, this is uh, how it looks. And um, as you can see, range is mixing now. Again, now I just I just want to really really talk about this, guys. I'm I'm checking this over with GTO with with the solver, but obviously he's not playing GTO. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to extrapolate some data here to figure out what is GTO and then where he's varying and what we can do about it. So what he's not doing correctly. So let me go ahead and show that I should be betting this at a decent frequency, um, which I do. And what he's not doing is he's never raising pocket jacks, which I block, which I, which I block heavily. He's not raising these hands down here, which are the sets fours threes and deuces well he would raise those i'm sorry he would raise those but then i just fold so like i know what he has and i know you could say well you're giving up ev but he has these so little amount of time because i honestly think his range i wish i could draw on here his range doesn't have these so often like he's one of those people that will limp like sixes and lower or fives and lower so like he just doesn't have these so i'm gonna he's gonna have a lot of these hands up here and he's gonna fold out these way too much. Look, all these hands call at a high frequency. A7 and A8, they fold at like what? Um, they fold at like 33, like a third of their frequency. But he doesn't. He doesn't know that. He 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 thinks that all these should be calling. So right here, when I bet the turn, I actually thought he was gonna fold. So then I was like, okay, his hand is like very close to these right here if he's calling. Or he has like king jack suited, king jack off, king queen off, king jack, king queen suited, qu king queen off, king jack suited, and king jack uh, off these hands right here, which look raise at certain frequency. When he calls a turn and the rivers of jack of clubs, obviously the jet, my jack of nine is full betting, basically 100% of the time. So solver approves on my, on my end, but just to, go over he he doesn't know that okay first of all look at what's calling here ace three ace four so those are pairs ace ten ace jack suited are calling that's really interesting ace jack they're all calling these three combos the suited combos which is spades hearts and diamonds which is the uh the suits on the flop and the offsuit ace highs are that are almost pure calling ace ten Ace Jack and Ace Queen. <clears throat> you see, basically all combos are calling. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Ace of Spades. So the Queen of Clubs, it looks like, is raising. That's that's interesting. At, at a very low frequency. With the Ace, with the Queen of Clubs. See, this one is the Queen of Clubs also. Ace of, Ace of Diamonds, Queen of Clubs. Because it just means that they can't have the Queen of Clubs which is what you want when you raise, but anyways, or when you call, but anyways, the point is, is that when I got to this, when he called the turn, I was like, okay, he probably has 
pockets sixes, sevens, eights, maybe nines, and maybe tens. In theory, he should have jacks, queens, kings, ten, uh, aces. He might raise those, and that's why I, I, I threw them out. But I think his exact hands is sixes through nines, maybe a little bit of tens. So now I'm like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just like check fold on the river. You know, I have jack high. I'm going to give up, which is, you know, not GTO. If like, I guarantee like if I put this as another card, uh, jack nine is going to give up. But I did hit my jack and I could have went bigger. <clears throat> I know solver likes this 50% um, the best by far. Oops, that's nine ten. Um, which I've studied this spot a lot, and I, I actually, on the river, I only give myself like three sizing. Depending on how polar I want to be, I might do a massive over bet, but most of the time I give myself one third, half, and uh, like pot. Uh, and I knew that most of the time I don't use the pot unless I'm, I want to really polarize. I knew that betting out of position half pot would, would probably yield the highest uh, EV. So that's why I bet half pot. Um, I think you could go bigger because you're, the exploit by going bigger is you are getting value from basically his whole range that can call. And he's never raising. He's never raising because he's unbalanced. He never has sets or boats or two pairs. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, higher two pairs because you have jacks and deuces. Um, so it was, it was just like an exploit. Uh, and it, it not only was a GTO in, in theory in most of the, but and the reason why I, I don't want to say that it was just purely GTO is because he's not playing GTO. He's not even trying to play because he doesn't, he doesn't understand GTO. He doesn't, he doesn't even know the, the, the nodes and the, uh, the game trees, I guess you, I can call them for game theory, optimal strategy. So, uh, when going over, when, when, when playing these low connected boards, really think about when you should be donking and why it could yield a higher EV. And for me, I just thought he's going to just play it incorrectly so often. And I know this game tree pretty well. Now, of course, like I don't know exact frequencies, like et cetera, like I said, queen jack suit is raising I knew something was raising in here. I just didn't know the exact hands. But knowing these game trees and knowing how to study, it's going to just print money in the long run. And yeah, like maybe the jack of spades of, of clubs bailed me out on the river, but that's not how you should think about poker. It's not about winning the pot. It's about making the highest EV play. And I believe you need to know what's the best and standard play to to veer from that and do something out of the ordinary that's not just fancy, fancy play syndrome it's not fancy play syndrome but it's you're doing it because you think you can get to high cv it has nothing to do with you trying to confuse your opponents no i just knew i just thought in theory that i would be exploiting him more by going for this unstandard dunk betting line so I wanted to share that hand with you. I hope you guys liked it. Any comments or any discussion that you guys want to have around this hand, this line, whatever, just leave it in the comments below, and uh, I will see you later. Peace. Remember, don't stop studying. I'll take your money.